Hi, welcome back. In this review, we'll be looking at one of iLife's latest robot vacuums, the A10. I believe this model is their first LiDAR-based robot vacuum with Wi-Fi and a smartphone app, which is a step above the previous generation iLife robots I've tested before. So there are two A10 options, the A10 and the A10S. The robot I have is the A10 that doesn't have the mopping attachment, while the A10S comes with a water tank and mopping pad. iLife told me that the A10 and A10S would be available in specific regions, which I'll specify in the description once I get more details. How good is the A10? How well does it navigate? We'll answer those questions and more in this review. Full disclosure, iLife sent me this robot for free to test, but as you'll see in my review, I base my findings on test results to be as subjective as possible. Let's start with design and an overview of features. The A10 retains the round frame and dual side brush system as older A-series robots like the A4S. It has a glossy gray finish with black accents. One difference is the laser sensor on top. This model is iLife's first robot vacuum with LiDAR which unlocks several key features such as the invisible wall and no-go zones. It's also their first robot vacuum with selective room cleaning that adds a layer of control and convenience you don't see in other iLife products. Out of the box, you'll get two types of brushes, the default combo brush plus an all rubber brush. There isn't much of a difference between the two in terms of surface debris pickup, but the all rubber brush is much better for cleaning hair, which I'll expound on later. These side brushes clip into place and are color coded. You'll also get an extra set out of the box. iLife says the A10 has a cellular dustbin with conical cylinders that protects the filter from getting clogged. And based on test, this claim seems to be valid as the filter wasn't as dirty as other brands after a series of cleaning tests. The dustbin loads from the back and with the top opening is easier to empty. According to this AliExpress product page, it can hold up to 600 milliliters of dirt so it's above average. Despite access to a smartphone app, iLife still includes an old-fashioned remote which includes features not found in the app such as access to cleaning modes like edge cleaning and spot cleaning. You can also use it to schedule but I prefer using the app for such. Since the A10 is iLife's first LiDAR based robot, I was really curious how it navigates. So one of the first things I tested is navigation. I was expecting a similar path as a Roborock, but iLife's version is different. It doesn't start at the edges, but immediately traverses through the room's middle portions in straight lines all the way to the edges. So this compensates for not having edge cleaning built into the algorithm. iLife doesn't seem to have a dynamic algorithm as it goes in the direction where the dock is facing. Turns are really wide without any overlap. In fact, there's a gap between rows. When you combine it with a narrow brush roll, measuring less than 6 inches wide, there will be missed spots. Also, it only goes around once. The iLife app doesn't have an option to choose how many passes, so you'll have to rely on the scheduling feature to do additional runs. To test its efficiency and coverage, I scattered Quaker Oats all over the room, then ran the A10 one cleaning cycle. You can see the debris it missed due to the wide turns after the first run. So I did a second run where it picked up more debris but still missed some spots. The issue isn't pickup but the narrow brush roll and wide turns. It's quite adept at navigating through tight spaces. Not once did it get wedged into the office chair legs but you'll have to clear any wires or small objects to avoid getting caught up. Climbability is decent as it was able to go over the 0.8 inch rug but it's not as good on solid thresholds as it did not clear the 0.72 inch MDF board. Airflow is decent with up to 14.2 CFM at the highest setting, lower than the Roborock S4 Max I tested previously. Regardless, surface debris pickup is decent, especially on hard floors. Passes were clean, even with difficult to clean stuff like sand. The sand on hard floor test scores was lower than usual because of a quirk in the navigation. You can see in this overhead shot, after the initial pass, it made an extra wide turn, so it missed a spot right here. On the plus side, agitation was good as it got a good chunk of sand. So I ran the robot a second time to pick up the rest of the sand particles and it was able to do so. While cleaning dynamics is good, iLeft has to tighten up the navigation, perhaps add another pass in its default cycle, plus an option to control the number of passes to really compete with the likes of Roborock. The two side brushes did scatter a portion of debris, but it isn't as bad as the other brands I've tested. One unique feature iLeft has is the option to adjust the side brush speed, which is accessible through the app. I just keep it at the lowest setting to minimize scattering, 
as it automatically increases rotation when it detects an object or cleans an edge. On carpet, the A10 is decent, but the passes aren't as clean as it is on hard surfaces. It wasn't as good in the deep cleaning test, where it only picked up an average of 45.17%. It did better with the combo brush at 47.95% than the all rubber brush that only picked up an average of 42.4%. Next, we look at the hair wrap test, where I scattered 1 gram of 5 and 7 inch human hair to see how well a robot vacuum resists tangles. The A10 did better with the all rubber brush, picking up 80 and 72% respectively in the 5 and 7 inch tests. It has the same hair resisting properties as Roomba's extractors with hair wrapping on the axles. In comparison, the standard brush didn't do as well, only picking up 20 and 50% respectively, with hair wrapping on the bristles. Edge cleaning is another strength of the A10 as it picked up a good chunk of coffee grounds in this area. The twin side brush definitely helped cleaning this zone. The A10 is compatible with the iLife home app and I'll highlight the notable features in this section. To get the app, scan this QR code found underneath the robot or search iLife Home wherever you download your apps from. Follow the steps to pair the app and robot. Please note you'll need a router to do so. One of my favorite features of the iLife app is the option to save maps. In each level, you can restrict access to specific areas using invisible wall and no-go zones. iLife doesn't specify how many maps you can save on their website, but so far I've saved 3 map levels and the add new map button is still enabled, so that's at least 4 levels, which is more than enough. Creating a new map is easy, with just a few taps on the app. When creating a new map, the robot goes into exploration mode with the vacuum motor shut off to maximize coverage. After creating a map, you can now split areas and use custom names to identify these zones. However, the algorithm doesn't support automatic room recognition, so just in case you move the robot to a different area, you'll have to manually select the corresponding map level. If not, the robot will create a new map. Selective room cleaning is also available if you want the robot to clean a specific area. You can use the scheduling feature in conjunction with this and let's say, clean specific zones that are vacant at certain times during the day. So users will have several options on how to use these features to best suit their needs. Carpet Boost is also available, but iLife's version is different from Roborock and Roomba where it increases suction when it detects carpet. With iLife's app, you'll have to assign carpeted zones on the app to notify the robot that these areas have carpet, so it increases suction when it enters these zones. Target zone is similar to zone cleaning where you can specify an area you want the robot to clean on the map. It's like the spot cleaning function on the remote but more precise. Users can also adjust the suction, however it doesn't have any fixed settings, instead it has a slider so you can choose a range between 1 and 100. I tested how well it picks up at the lowest setting and it was usable, especially on hard floors. But on carpet, you'll have to use the max setting to pick up anything embedded. You'll notice a water level control tab within the A10 app. But the A10 without the S doesn't include the water tank, so you'll have to buy this separately or opt for the A10S that comes with an electronic water tank and mopping pad. Expect the A10 to be noisy, especially at the higher power settings. Based on the sound meter, it produced 68.8 decibels at the highest setting. In the lowest setting, it's quiet at a shade under 60 decibels. This robot will run for up to 100 minutes in the lowest setting, but expect it to be closer to 60 minutes when you use the max setting. Since this robot has recharge and resume, runtime shouldn't be a concern since it will resume cleaning if it doesn't finish the task previously. To conclude this review, the iLife A10 offers a lot of value with access to features like invisible wall, no-go zones, and selective room cleaning. Users can also save multiple map levels, making this robot suitable inside multi-level homes. Cleaning performance is decent, but navigation needs some tweaking as it lacks thoroughness and the turns are too wide. If this video has been helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified when I publish new reviews like this. Links are in the description for more information. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.